Hi, and welcome to Scandy Plants. Is your orchid as hairy as mine is? Well, there's a reason for that, and I'll explain to you in this short video why that is. Now, first off, all plants, not only orchids, have these small hairs on their roots, and there's a reason why they have that. And they're called rhizoids. And basically they're there to help the plant collect water and nutrients. But because, and now I know this is not a normal, normal plant, but we're, we're pretending it is. We can't see them underneath the dirt, right? We can't, no. I mean, we can see the roots on this orchid, but no hairs. And the reason why that is, is because the rhizoid, they only, they only grow on the new growth, but the not yet mature growth, so to speak. So not exactly in the front, because if they, if they did where, you know, where the spiking sort of thing on the root is, they'd just get shedded off. But they're right there. Can you see? And very soft to the touch and fuzzy. And I mean, this is the hairiest I've ever seen. I've seen it before, but this is... Can you see that? And it's easily mistaken for mould as well. Heck, I even thought it was mould the first time I saw it. But there's no mould in here. And the reason why I know is because I can pick it up, I can smell it. When I water it, I smell it. You know, there's nothing on the media. And... I've even brought to you today an orchid that has mould just to to show you the difference or try to to show you at least it doesn't it hardly has any left anymore thank god but yeah so rhizoids fear not you they collect water and nutrients from the dirt or the media around so when you water, say you, you watered your orchid, you even added some fertiliser in there. The little hairs soak it up and collect it for the root to then absorb it. So the reason why we don't see the hairs as much here is because it's a mature root. Okay? And that's why we only notice a little bit of it and this in particular I think the reason why I can see it so much on this one is because all of a sudden she just started like speed growing roots just literally like this is <laughs> in two two weeks yeah so it's very important that they've got these so please do not remove them um as I said, they're, they're useful for the plant. And I mean, why would the plant have them if they weren't? I mean, it's the, the whole um, origins of species, survival of the fittest, right? But if you're still afraid, that it might be mold you've got. You see the white, fussy stuff, and you're thinking mold, oh my God. Smell the plant first. You can smell it. You're not in doubt. I mean, it stinks. It's, it's like this chemically eerie smell like awful and i have this small insidium to seek your ct glory here which i love it's a mini insidium um and yeah like i explained in my earlier videos we moved houses and this is one of them that suffered in the old house it got mold and I could smell it, and I couldn't really smell it until we moved to this house, oddly enough. But I was watering it, and I could smell it. So I dug into the media. She was potted in a little, like, little pot from originally from the, um, from the orchid nursery, where I got her. <clears throat> um, it was fine. There was nothing, you know, it wasn't breaking down or anything in the media. So I, I dug in, and I could see the mould. I couldn't see it on top. I mean, I was fooled. But hey, a first time for everything, right? So, because I was lacking um, 
anything but very coarse bark that's what I've got at the moment I'm I'm currently in the process of ordering a bit finer because for me for for the more um, humid more like the dogwoods that don't like to dry out as much as say a phalaenopsis um, in my environment I need smaller bark yeah I know it degrades probably fast and whatnot but I need a smaller bark and I need to add my own sphagnum moss I do buy a mix from an orchid nursery but there's not near enough sphagnum moss in there for, for these so this is a quick semi-hydroponics just for the summer I think um, because I love this orchid so much that I don't want to experiment with this yet I'm only doing semi-hydroponics with the non-species so to say but yeah, it's good. She's got three new growths. So you can see it was alright for me to pot her. She's got new rooted start new roots starting and everything. <clears throat> but what I wanted to show you the difference. Right, so she's not wet right now. Let me see if I can find a sprayer thingy. I've got one here. Let me see if I can show you. Yeah, it works a little bit. Okay, see, I take the top of the lecker off. And even though I took her out, I dipped her, I basically bathed her, not the leaves and everything, but she was like in there for like an hour or something in the hydro, hydrogen peroxide 3% thingy, like a mixture with that and, and water. I started, I even tried spraying it on like... Uh, directly on and letting her fist but because she was so so covered in mold I I bathe her in it and when you bathe my with my experience when you bathe for an hour or two you dilute it a little bit with water but you can see I don't know if you can see that can you see that that is not the natural color of this lecker that's mold <laughs> and Though I cannot see any mold forming in here, it forms on the top. Can you can you see? See that white there? That's mold. So when it's on the media and I can smell it, is mold. Do you like my um my quick and easy fast hydro <laughs> pot? <laughs> Pretty. So yeah. She's due for a repot again, but I don't want to disturb her too much. I'm flushing her more than I even should. But that's the reason why as well I think Summer Hydro works fine for now. Because I can flush her constantly. I mean, with bark, it's, you know, I can even pick these out, put some new ones in. The ones I can see that are mouldy. With bark, it's just a waste you throw it out, right? So, these I can boil and and whatnot and make them sterile again so so yeah don't be afraid of your little fussy friends they're actually really really good for your orchid and i hope you have a fantastic day bye